Hey guys, it's Becky and Chris here from the UncommonLaw.ca and today we're doing a review of the Osmo Pro. This has the X5 camera. It's a micro four third system which has a removable lens option whereas the Osmo regular does not. It's a fixed lens. So for anybody who doesn't know, the Osmo is a gimbal stabilized camera. So basically it is an electronic steady cam if you think about it that way. We started vlogging about six months ago when we moved to Vancouver and uh, we bought this camera actually as the primary camera for that purpose. And while it takes amazing steady video, we've noticed a few quirks about it. So we're kind of gonna just do a quick review and cover all the shortcomings that we've encountered. One of the main issues I find with the Osmo is that it takes forever to start up and you can't film spur of the moment things. The reason why it takes so long is because you have to fire up the Osmo, it creates a network, then you have to connect to that Wi-Fi network, then you have to open the DJI app, then you have to connect to the camera. So it takes probably about a minute, minute and a half to set up. And then about five, one in every five times, you actually have to reboot the phone because it just won't work. It basically kills any spontaneous moments. So you may have noticed a lot of out of focus shots in our videos, and that's because the focusing is extremely slow, inaccurate, and I don't know if that's just a function of it being a micro four third system. We come from DSLRs where focusing is just like that. Focus peaking would be an easy software update they could add. When I was researching the camera prior to purchasing, I saw that it had a focus assist function, which basically zooms in and mags up on the area that you focus, but that actually is only available when you're in photo mode. So that's another software shortcoming that could easily be fixed, but hasn't been yet as far as I know. So listen up DJI. So there's actually a huge issues with the audio in this camera. Um, randomly we'll actually get just dropped audio in clips. Just, I haven't found a way to predict which clips will drop or when it drops or if there's any indication because we're still getting uh, audio signal bars. Then we go review the footage afterwards and there's just no audio. And it's not just for one clip either. It could drop and then not come back for four or five clips. That's not just a shortcoming, that's a straight up flaw. So if you're recording a long clip, the audio and video are timed slightly differently. So by the end of the clip, you'll have drift in the audio, which is a huge pain in the ass when you're editing in post because you're trying to chop stuff up and your audio is not in sync. And if you wanted to ever use a continuous take, you would actually have to stretch the audio, which is again, a huge pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, there's been no fix for that yet. There are actual flaws in the app itself. For example, when you're trying to change the aperture of your lens, and again, this only applies to the X5 camera because it has an adjustable aperture, and it might be at F 2.8 and you try to slide it over to 5.6 and it'll just go snap right back to 2.8 like a lot of the times you're trying to change it it just won't change that'll probably happen about 50 percent of the time so the osmo has a sleep function which on surface value is seems like it'd be useful because it would save battery and you could fire it back up really fast except that when you do that it doesn't save or remember your exposure settings it just resets back to the default exposure settings the benefit of putting it to sleep would be to fire it back up and be ready to go we've noticed that with our manual fisheye lens that we have the camera doesn't really like it that much it generally works and it stabilizes it and you can shoot video but any of the photos that come out of it it says the raw files are corrupted i've yet to to find something that can read them or repair them. I know they do say, oh, the only supported lenses are these, but every camera that takes removable lenses, you can put a manual lens on it and still at least use the file. Also, when using the app with that same manual lens, if you exit the app and then try to come back into it, and you are on manual exposure mode, the app will crash and it'll continue to crash until you remove the manual lens, put on a lens that's automatic, then go back into the app, change it to auto exposure mode, then switch back to the fisheye. Solution, if you want fisheye shots, just buy a GoPro. That's what we did. It's very difficult to shoot a time lapse on this camera. If you put this on a tripod and you want a steady shot, it drifts. There actually is a time lapse function in the regular Osmo. Um, but they've disabled that as well as the panorama function on the X5 for the Osmo Pro. My next gripe is the charger. Surface value looks just like a normal charger. It does what it's supposed to do, it charges batteries. However, when I plug it in, the LED turns green saying my battery's charging. It doesn't give you an indication of how much your battery's charged. The thing is, is that the LED also turns green when my battery is plugged in and this is unplugged. So right now, my charger's unplugged, my battery's plugged in, and my battery is powering this light. So this is a huge design flaw in my opinion. The only way to really tell the battery percentage is to stick it in the Osmo, turn the app on, log into the Wi-Fi network, fire up the app, wait for the feed, just to check a battery percentage. So when you're trying to review your footage, you have to go through and do it on the phone and it takes a very long time to load. I've been sitting there for five minutes before and it's still trying to load footage from the SD card, which is not 
acceptable when you're trying to deal with a production level camera or a camera that's trying to be production level. I actually do commend DJI for really kind of breaking the mold of a traditional video camera. With the uh, lenses attached, the phone accessory and the mic, this doesn't really fit into any bag. We end up wrapping it in a Tenva wrap and it goes down in the bag like this. And in its own backpack. So if you're doing a lot of home shooting, then it's great. So that's a lot of cons and I think the goal of this review is to, you know, make sure that you guys realize that. Obviously one of the main advantages of the camera is going to be the steady footage. Even with this stuck out the window driving 100 plus kilometers per hour. It's really good at uh, ironing out all the motion. If you've ever done the, the, what's called the steady cam walk where you're like hunched over and you're doing like tippy toe stuff, you still have to do that if you want a really, really smooth shot. Yeah. But just walking holding this is a hell of a lot smoother than if you're walking and holding a DSLR in front of you. Something else you can do is you can go into sort of a flashlight orientation here. It irons out the uh, walking a little. And you can get lower shots and just skim it off the ground Comparing it to a DSLR with a Steadicam, it's lighter. We were talking about how slow it is firing up for vlogging for quick shots, but if you're doing a shoot where you're actually going to set up, it's, it's a lot quicker and easier to set this up. We're complaining about it's not good for run and gun shooting. Going back to the alternative, a DSLR and a Steadicam. So the battery life on the Oslo is not amazing. 30 to 45 minutes maybe for one of these little guys. They actually make a battery that attaches to a drone battery. And this thing literally lasts for like five times one of these batteries. So that's a pro if you actually own a Phantom 4 from DJI. If you don't, then that's just extra cost. If you're doing a lot of long day shooting, then I would actually invest in one of these. Even if you don't own a drone. So another thing that I like about the Osmo is that you can change the color settings. You can set it to D-Log or Cine Light Gamma, which basically compress a bit more dynamic range into the image, um, which gives you more flexibility when you're editing and trying to do color correction and color grading. A lot of professional cameras have this feature, but you don't see this a lot in more consumer-based cameras like this one. Getting back to the audio, pro is that it has manual audio. Con is that it only has manual audio and no other options. You have a system which is entirely dependent on a consumer phone, not to mention things like focus peaking that you would absolutely need, which are absent, but you have all these other pro features that consumers that you're targeting using an iPhone or an Android phone would never use. It seems like DJI is trying to target too many people. I can't see using this professionally, even though they've seemed like they're trying to target the professional market with a lot of the features. And at the same time, they've tried to target the consumer market by making it very accessible with a phone. If they had an option to have an integrated LCD screen into this that would boot up instantaneously, I would easily pay an extra few hundred dollars for that. On paper, it's a great idea to use the phone. In practice, it's clunky, it's slow. So all in all, the Osmo, I think, is just a little bit confused on where it fits into the market. I think DJI tried to sell it as a prosumer model as well as a consumer model and in turn sort of made mediocre products for both markets. For consumers who just want a camera they can pull out of their bag and start filming like a GoPro, you can't do that because you gotta connect with your phone. And then on the prosumer side, you've got professional things like Cine like Gamma, but you're missing things like focus peaking. A lot of these things could be easily upgraded by software updates. So the question is, is the Osmo for you? And basically what it comes down to, if you're doing a lot of staged commercial work where you have time to set your shots up and mic your sure. subjects, yeah. then sure, you'll get really good, nice, stable footage out of it. If you're somebody who's a vlogger who's just trying to get your camera out fast, film spontaneous spur of the moment things, then this camera is definitely not for you because by the time you get it out, that spontaneous moment will be gone. So we've said a lot of negative things about the Osmo in this review and don't get us wrong. We do love the camera and the footage that comes out of it, but I do think it's something that needs to be said all in one place because I didn't key into all of these downsides when I was researching it. These are definite things to think about and if they'll affect you and your shooting style. So that was our review of the Osmo. Let us know what you think. Do you have one yourself? Are you thinking about getting one? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.